Welcome back. In this video, we'll show you how to slice and sample data in a Polar's data frame. Sampling is a task often associated with statistics and machine learning. As a data engineer, you may be part of a team that supports data scientists. For this reason, we've included this lecture to cover some of the most common tasks of slicing and sampling. I've gone ahead and preloaded our employee's CSV file here in the Jupyter Notebook. As a reminder, this data set is completely fictional and does not represent real people. With that said, let's dive in. First, let's talk about slicing. If you want to extract a specific range of rows from your data frame, you can use the slice function. Let's test this function by slicing our data variable starting at index 5. Within the function, we'll pass 5 as our starting position. Next, we need to tell Polars how many records we want to return from this position. Let's pass 7 and run the cell. This returns a slice of our data frame. Notice how employee ID 6 is the first record we get back. How can this be when we specified 5 as our starting point? Remember that in Python, our index starts at 0. So when we specified position 5, what we really told Python was to start at employee ID 6 because position 0 contains employee ID 1. Let's talk through another function that can be used for slicing and sampling data. The take every function gives you the ability to select every nth row. Let's utilize this function by calling it off of the data variable and setting n equal to 3. When we run the code, we get back 10 records in a data frame. So this function can be used for data set reduction or sampling. If you do use it for a sampling method, keep in mind that it always starts from the first row. The nth row builds from there. Finally, let's talk about the sample function, which is probably the best way for you to sample data. By default, this function will return a random sample of our data set with the specified number of rows we're looking for. Let's say that we want 10 rows of data. We'll call the sample function off of our data variable and then pass 10 into the function. When we run the code, we get back a randomized selection of our employee data. If we run the code a second time, you'll see that our 10 records change, and this is because it's randomly pulling from the data set. Rather than passing the number of records you want, you can also specify the percentage of data that you want to sample. This is handy for when you have data coming through a pipeline with various row lengths, and you want the same percentages of the data going into both testing and training. To demonstrate this, we'll call our sample function again and set the fraction argument equal to 0.5 or 50%. When we run the code, we get 15 records, which is half of our 30 records. One final argument we'll show you deals with generating the same random sample consistently. You might be wondering why we'd even want to randomly sample data the exact same way twice. Isn't being random the whole point? Well, the answer can be boiled down to two words, reproducibility and comparison. For example, if you build two machine learning models on two different data samples, then comparison of these two models would be unfair because there are factors in the underlying data that cannot be tracked. On the other hand, if the models are built on the same data, it's easy to draw clear comparisons when one performs better than the other. With that being said, let's show you how to randomly sample the same data every single time. We'll call the sample function once again and set 10 as the number of records we want. We'll then call the seed argument and pass any integer value that we want. In our case, we'll pass 42, which is the answer to the ultimate question of life. When we run the code, we once again get a randomly generated data set. However, the seed makes it so that we can regenerate it again and again. Let's test this by once again running the cell. Running it a second time reveals that the data is the exact same. Still randomly generated, but reproducible. And there you have it. 
you now know how to slice and sample data in a polar's data frame this should give you the experience you need to support a data science team and work on machine learning pipelines thank you for watching and we'll catch up with you soon